issued an extraordinary preliminary assessment in June on unidentified aerial phenomena. I want to ask you to share with the audience your takeaway after the completion of, of that report and what your own view is as you look at the evidence. Yeah, I mean, I think the bottom line is that we don't understand everything that we're seeing, and that's probably not surprising to anybody in many respects. Frankly, we were not able to understand everything about it. And But of course, there's always the question of, is there something else that we simply do not understand that might come extraterrestrial? extraterrestrial? Let me just ask a, a, a follow-up question. You didn't answer the question. How would we know if we were being observed, for example? That's, I find, a question people pose to me often uh, in, the, in the weeks before this, this session. Um, that we are definitely going to be able to tell if we're being observed under the circumstances. I mean, I think there's a lot of different ways in which that might be revealed, but certainly we're working to make sure that we understand what we do see and what phenomenon is identified and otherwise we're gonna to have to wait for Bill's science work, I think, to actually reveal some of these additional possibilities, not to mention some of the other people that I think we'll talk to later today. To have some trouble. Alan, do you think they're ever gonna to get to talking about ETs and UFOs? I think that might be all they wanna say is that there was a report that said there were UAPs, but this has nothing to do with with the subject this is all right. politics elizabeth has this always been the case you've been in this field a long time and there's always been these two different conversations well let's look for out life in outer space and ignore the life that's visiting us now i mean that's just been yeah. i mean this whole the, the, this whole thing feels like it takes me back to 1995 you know first <laughs> disclosure conference where I was there with all those good people and we were ahead of what they're talking about now back then so yeah there's always the, the surface stuff like this that's and and there's always the community that keeps on digging into the real stuff I mean this woman knows a lot that she's not saying she's the head the director of national intelligence, which brings together all the intelligence agencies together, the CIA, FBI, they're the yeah. ones that went through that report. Now well, she ain't talking. Well, I was going to say, Kat, this is one reason that psychics are needed because we can communicate across time and space in an instant. Yes. Right. So we don't have to send the message out and wait for it to get there in one million years and that's why they had a psychic on star trek of course as well but i i also am struck by how important um evolving our consciousness is because each one of these people um, except for maybe dr Loeb, who's wonderful i adore him but but everybody else is very mired in their personal view yeah and um and we all are right to some extent we all are but, but i know everybody on this panel is always trying to expand and think beyond our values or the little things yeah. we've learned along the way um so yeah it, it really inspires me for us all to continue to expand right because mm -hmm. what psychics are are people who've activated a higher level of consciousness a higher level of awareness so you are like the visionaries looking out of the ship at sea at the distance you know energies because you're able to see it you're not relying on equipment we have the equipment right here in our consciousness you just have to learn how to operate it right cat that's what you're seeing you yeah, fine tuning it that's exactly right you just fine tuning it because we know we're not alone and they do too it's just you know they just um it's like they're programmed like they can't say too much they it's like this is all mm -hmm. they're going to put out to the public and it's no i don't think some of them already. really know that they're that we're not alone i don't think they these are intelligent people i, I mean do not you really that intelligent no i don't think so 
they're <laughs> stuck in their religion. They're stuck in their, they haven't, I mean, maybe they do, but the, why would they be lying publicly to us? <laughs> Can't imagine. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I mean, it's more of like, we're, they're only going to say just enough. And, and, you know, like just to kind of, for the general public to say, oh, they're doing something. You know, oh, this is what they're going to, you know, finally start to, you know, explore. And, but, but they know that, I mean, they already know that everything, you know, we've already gone to Mars and there's, it, it just blows my mind that, 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 that they just keep putting this stuff out there and not being, and, and lying and, and just flat out lying, not telling the truth, not being open. But again, when it really comes down to any UFOs or um, unidentified, you know, aerial phenomena. Um, it's about the technology, right? They want the technology. It's about if there's a threat. Um, but so they're just going to keep us at bay as far as, the, and I keep saying the general public, because we all know that <laughs> there are intelligent life out there as right. a fact. And so it's not like they don't know it because they're in the government. They do know it. I mean, they're just, again, they're just not putting it out to the general public. They're just giving little clippets, little tiny pieces of what they want us to believe. Wait, he's closing now. Do you want to just hear the closing? Because it's all been a farce. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to even Thank you to the Ignatius family. Thank you to all of you. I don't you. think their benediction is going to help us any. <laughs> It was but, a total awful, awful joke. I mean, yeah, they're talking, but they're ab absolutely nothing was said. Well, you're you're so right, Kat. That you know, there's so much known that they won't give out, and and they treat us like children. And it's it's not really because, well, it's because they're afraid of what we might do with the information that it would cause them to lose some control over us. What would we do with the information, Elizabeth? What would we do with it? Well, we might all be practicing how to commune with these ETs and learning more information and stuff that the government would rather not have us know because it would lose control for them. There's so much, you know, there, this, we're, we're still in empire building mode in top-down organizations where, where the men who have designed empires, and it's been pretty much men for a long time, uh, are afraid of losing their control. And so they think up more and more technology. And even Avi is, is into the technology stuff in a way that I would have hoped he wasn't, that he wow. thinks we're going to create life in the laboratory and send out our artificial life beings. Um, it's, it's frustrating. That made more sense to me, though, than Bezos' program. Yeah, it did to me, too. But his belief that guys in a laboratory are going to be able to create life, that womb envy that's always been around, mm -hmm. <laughs> that... There was that wonderful book written a long time ago by a man called Fathering the Unthinkable, talking about how the first atomic bomb was named Fat Boy mm. and, and the telegram they sent to each other when it was first exploded was, it's a boy. And he pointed out that that was very telling womb envy. <laughs> womb envy, that's a good term for it. We've heard the other version, right? Womb, yes, so we have, but womb envy is creation. It's, envy. it's creation, womb envy. Has I'm saying, yeah, women have been told they have penis envy if they try to act like men, right? Right, but men so trying to create. I'm saying, and he pointed out that men have womb envy. <laughs> I agree. Uh, that's a good point. You should write a book about that, Elizabeth. He wrote the book. It's called Fathering the Unthinkable. He's a man. What, that's more powerful than if a woman wrote it. Oh, well, it's probably good to, for a woman to write a book called Womb Envy. But um, um, did you anyway. read Dr. Arby's uh, book, uh, Who? Alan? Did I what? Doctor, did you read his book? Avi Loeb? Yes. No, he just says, well, I read parts of it, but he says in that book what he says here. Every, and But he got a lot of flack from the scientific community to suggest this might be an extraterrestrial object. Everyone said, oh, that's just an asteroid on a strange orbit, because when it passed the sun, it accelerated 
in a way that wasn't natural. So he said the shape of it, the this kind of silver metallic kind of look to it. There were other elements that he says it is not a typical asteroid and the and the and the orbit that it, you know we live in a solar plane. I mean the it's sort of flat. The 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 way the planets revolve around the sun it's all on the same plane. This came in from out of this plane and circled around in a whole other way. So it wasn't from maybe even our galaxy, but maybe it wasn't a yeah. solar object, right? But what about all of the footage right. of all of uh, what we see here? I mean, why don't they ever address it? That is the biggest question. What, what were you gonna say, Elizabeth? I think it's fear of, of loss of control. By the way, I have I have another uh, Ed Mitchell story about ETs, if you want. Yes, yes, because when <laughs> I asked him about ETs, he didn't tell me anything. Uh, well, we were at a conference together. We were both speakers at a conference in Brazil about the future. This is all in the 90s, you know. And, and uh, the governor of the province of Brasilia, this, this particular conference was in Brasilia, that super city that they built in the middle of the jungle and then no one could get there <laughs> as the capital. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the governor of Brasilia was sending a helicopter for me to go visit some of his farm projects, you know, because I was interested in agricultural products and stuff for Brazil. And as I was heading for the helicopter, I saw Ed in the hall and I said, Elp, Ed, are you free? Come with me. I, there's a military helicopter picking me up. Come with me on this little trip. So he popped in and we were in the back seat together and the pilot and co-pilot were in the front seat, had four seats, this little helicopter. Nice. And, and along the way, somehow, well, first of all, the, the pilots discovered that Ed had flown spaceships and they were very excited about that. They had asked him what he said something about the helicopter and then they you know, asked more questions. What other craft have you flown, right? <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, the pilots started talking about, I said, oh, they said, would you like to go look for anacondas on a beach or something before we go to the farms? And I said, yeah, let's do that. And I joked and I said, how about we go to Virginia? And he said, oh, the pilot, you know about the Virginia ETs? And I said, yeah, I'd like to go see, the, you know, where those ETs had landed. And, the, and the, it was either the pilot or the co-pilot that said, oh, my brother was there. And as soon as they sighted them and they reported it, the U.S. military flew in right away and they got one of them and took them back to a base in my, at least, well, they were headed for Miami with one of the ETs. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting information. What did Edgar say about that? Well, he had the same reaction I did, you know, how do we, let's find out more about this if we can, but we weren't able to. JJ Hertog also knew about the Virgin, Virginia. Um, Virginia. Yeah. yeah, the ETs there too. I think yeah, he had pictures sure. of them. Do you know who Edgar Mitchell was, Marla? He was the sixth man to walk on the moon and he started the Institute of Noetic Science. He had an epiphany in space when he was heading back to earth. He, he saw the oneness of creation looking out the window as the earth was rotating in the, as he was rotating in the capsule. He felt, he felt held in the arms of the universe. It was a lovely little phrase, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so he, he had- knew enough. that- Yeah. He knew that whatever happened to this mission, that he was held permanently in the arms of the universe. Right. I love that. Right. And he had an, that was an epiphany and he dedicated the rest of his life to consciousness yep. and exploring the Stop. mind, noetics. And that's what the ETs have to offer. It's like the psychics. It's why the psychics can commune with the ETs. Yes. And it's why the ETs can move their spaceships into the non-material realms and back. They have to be real careful. But imagine building spaceships that you can dematerialize and then rematerialize nuts and bolts, right? Right. How do they do that? How do they do that, Elizabeth? 
Well, I call it sliding up and down the keyboard. You know, if you look at my keyboard from matter right. of energy to spirit consciousness, they may know how to slide up and down the keyboard. But what do we, what don't, but what do they know that we don't know? How can they know how, how to slide up and down the keyboard? How, how do we get to figure that out? Well, you know, all humans have the capacity for out of body experiences, right? So in this, in that sense, we can move at least part of us out away from the physical in up higher on the keyboard. So everyone has that capacity, which they can train up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, Marla to, and, and Kat can say more because they are psychics. Right. Well, I would just like to re reiterate just a very short version of a story I told before. And um, this is when I a little bit unwillingly went through a portal and I was nervous about going out into the vastness. So I just went to the first space that was right next to the portal because I didn't want to go far. And I saw those, what I called the little flower people and I assumed that they could not see me, but they could. Right. And I, do you remember I went scurrying off? I scuttled out of there and then I realized how rude I was when they asked me who I was and where I came from. So that's an exact example of um, mm -hmm. doing like that. I was talking with a friend of mine last night and he was talking about the multiverses and he said, why not just slip through the hedge to your neighbors rather than walking out and driving down in a car and then walking back? Exactly. But it would be nice to have, it would have been nice to have someone go on that journey with me. Mm, and well, that I think is the tricky thing is that you know, a lot of this multi um, dimensional travel that we're doing takes place within us and is filtered through um, our whatever our personalities. Um, it would be nice to go along the journey with someone who is perceiving the same things, even if a, a different way. You could well, take Kat with you, right? Of course, we could do that. Let's I mean, go, Kat. This is Marina, right? I was I was listening to her um, interview there when she was oh. speaking, and, and her and her friend when she was younger, they yeah. said that you know manifesting, and yes, yeah, so that's the intention that we put. Up. Let's do this, Marla. <laughs> yeah, let, let's do, do it. it. It would be fun. Of course, I want to go with you. Take me. Oh, oh, it's a date. Well, we and could all do it. I mean, we could do it all as right. an experiment. Well, why right? do you need let's, us? Yes. Absolutely. You mm -hmm. can lead us. Do you want to do that like next week, maybe? Lead us to the place yeah. of the flower people. Yeah, the flower people. They're adorable and lovely and friendly. Okay. Will you lead the, the thing door? is, once you get somewhere, you have it mapped out inside yeah. yourself and you can return there. It's just like a low, you know, going to someone's house that you've never been to before, and then you can get there again more easily. So but the question just, is, how would I take you along with me? Well, describe how you get there. That's how you take us. Yeah, but see, we, we tune into each other. We are connecting to our heart space. And that's how I always do my work anyway. We talked about that a little bit. Um, when we're connecting here, we're matching up our frequency together. And the journey, mm -hmm. you know, you know, even if you're leading, we, we go, you know, again, our, our hearts are blended together as we move through you know, into the portal here to these beautiful flower people. <laughs> oh, that's a great They're experiment. So lovely, those flower people. Let, do you well, know we can get, try it. Do you know how to get back there, Marla? Yeah, I do. Oh, well, there you go. You or can... we could go visit Kenny in the bubble of love. No, no, or I'm, rather I'm sure Kat the... could uh, take bubble us many love. places. That's what I do. <laughs> well, but I, you know, I just want to tell you guys a really fast story. And um, yeah. I know this. No, uh, I, I was being drawn, you know, I used to go, I live near the beach, but anyway, I was just kind of practicing with um, 
doing like little sand castles, but I was, I was allowing being channeled to see what would be created with my hands. And it wasn't obviously a castle. It was, I was watching as my hands were, you know, creating this and, and I did it a few times and I'd look at it after what I was creating and they look like, um, amphibians and, 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 you know, uh, thing, you know, not fish exactly, but something like that. And so as I meditated, I'm like, what, what is this? You know, why do I keep kind of creating this? Um, and they said that I would go in my meditations that I, I was also part of these amphibians and I would help them um, because I guess there was these holes that they would dig and they would that would be their safety because they were being, you know, like hunted or killed. And so, and so that I actually was living in another lifetime to be able to help them. And I was like, what, you know, this was years ago. <laughs> so it kind of blew my mind, but I kept creating an every, you know, a few, it was maybe a few times I would go to the beach and I would just, you know, look back at it. And I, I'm like, what is this? And it was very similar each time. And it was like these amphibians. So I was like, okay, so I'm kind of amphibian then, huh? <laughs> That's what I was Were they ancient creatures? No, I just feel like it was uh, in another, you know, reality yeah. in the realm. Okay, right got now, it. Experiencing right now. So whether, you know, who knows when we go there, when we sleep, we may not even really remember that. But if I'm, you know, going there in my sleep and helping them. So I, I, I haven't visited and redid that. Or I haven't tried that in a long time. It's been many years, but it was very it's so nice. You were helping them, Kat. Yeah, I was like, yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> So and that's, you were you were with them in the eternal now, you know, the yeah. deep time is not linear. Um, anyway, you nice. know, Kat, Kat and Marla, if you think it would be easier for you two to take the pioneer journey together before you bring in the rest of us, that's fine with us too, right, Alan? Um, of course. I don't want I don't want to hold it up. <laughs> uh, maybe the energy is too confusing with four people at once. Or, or, it's up to you guys. But if you want to explore first, that's fine with me. Well, what do you I think? I think that's Mara? a great idea because then we could kind of align and then know how we work together. Build the power. Okay. And maybe that would be maybe fun. we can do it next week with Alan and me simply sitting by holding energy for you or something. We could do that. But I, I want to go on the tour. I know Come you on. do, Alan. Yeah. But I know you do, Alan, but they may have to. Well, pay maybe Kat way. and I could get together on our own before yes. next week. Before I, I think next we, week. Yes. I think we'll do it on our own at first. And, uh, yes. And then build the power and build the relationship there. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes that Love is it. Great. Okay, <laughs> we'll do that because I I want to visit the. I don't think the human experiment is going to fail from. I don't change. either. Thank you. I don't either. However, I would certainly like to see us living on the earth in in as lightly as possible and letting it regenerate and and those people who want understand why we need healthy food that's homegrown and all that stuff yeah. are important to us absolutely and we need psychics for the visionaries of the future all of it what do you think marla is how's the future look to you well you know when you ask me that question um i often get such a hopeful answer don't i yes and i believe you and i get i'm a hopeful person too yeah, yeah. I think we have, we just have so much to learn. And as I was listening to Elizabeth, I was thinking, you know, if we can each just do our part, right? If we can each just live our sole purpose, if we can connect to why we're here and what we're meant to do, and more importantly, what we have to offer, you know, we don't have to understand our many lifetimes or the enormity of the soul, but if we can connect to a little bit more of who we truly are and what we have to offer. Well, we are we light. We are love and we are light. And, you know, our purpose, our passion to be here is to spread that light in awareness and uh, raising your vibration. And again, so what brings you joy on a daily basis helps the planet, helps you, helps the planet, period. Right. You know, if you don't do anything else other than living in, a, in with joy, you are raising the frequency and helping the planet.
Yeah. You're helping I mean, consciousness, you're helping humanity. I think we're we love like and more. light, but I think <laughs> I think the love and light comes through not just by saying it, but but doing the joy that brings us, you know, more light and more we doing something that, yeah, that we love to do, that we contribute, that we're creating, yes. as opposed to a lot of people just saying they're love and light, which is great, better than saying, but it's doing. As Rumi said, there are a thousand ways to kneel and kiss the earth. And I exactly. always my talks by saying, find something that you love doing that you think would be part of your better future and yeah. do it so that you become an attractor to others because they see you so enjoying yourself. <laughs> exactly. Compassionate, I love that. Compassionate action. Yes. Whatever For that yourself means. and others. Yes. Whatever that means. I just have to say, I was very disappointed with the um, talk at that church tonight. Did you really, mind. But Alan, did you really believe it to be that it was going to be something different? I, I did I, I because. I've been, thank you for asking that question, but I've been, I've been listening to Luis Elizondo, who's really at the forefront of disclosure, if you know who he is. Send and us a new piece by him, Alan. I will, be because he, he let go of some very juicy gems there. You have to sort through the, the junk, but there's some great little pieces and I'll send it to everybody. Yes. Okay, yes. Great. Yeah. Would you? I would. And but I oh, think it's important. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Marla. I, Through the the junk, but there's some great little pieces, and I'll send it to everybody. Yes, okay, yes, great. Yeah. would you? I would. And but take, I oh. think it's important. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Marla. I, I think it's important uh, because we saw who everyone was tonight. You know, whether they're revealing the inner self or not doesn't matter. We saw who they are and what's important to them and what they want to hang on to. I, I think that's valuable information. Uh, mm, I don't know if it's value. I mean, for maybe for you, but I just want, I was hoping for more, but like Kat said, did you really expect that? I said, yes, I really did expect it. Cause but it we, was a measure of where we are in an overall way. Okay. So maybe watch the maybe not as far as you would have liked, just but turn on your television. Cause that's really what it felt like. <laughs> but if it's a measure of where we are, we have not progressed since not, since Star Trek. They kept talking about. Okay, well, okay, okay. We got it, Alan. And it is no, we it have is. progressed, Alan, because yeah. behind the scenes of what you see on television and the general public, what they're putting out there, it's behind the scenes of what we're doing and everybody else is doing and tuning. I mean, we're all behind over the, the world. scenes. We're yes. the avant garde. We are the avant garde, Marla. Might be, they may be, you know, the little puppets on stage, right? But yeah. we are behind yeah. the scenes and we are, you know, we are changing, every, you know, humanity. We are changing the consciousness. We are uplifting it. So, you know, I, I don't need to turn on my television to know that, you know, the lies or what they only want to put out there. I, I don't have to put my, first of all, look at this show that we're on, you know, I mean, aligned reality. Who yes. else is watching this? You know, well, the people. I that hope so other people are watching us. this besides us, but I well, I didn't make this live, but yes, there's there's the forefront <laughs> of watching this, but I will put this little section up live, starting with the uh, Edgar Mitchell conversation that Elizabeth initiated. But I thought it was really fascinating and I loved it. And I and I'll tell you why, because it was a bunch of powerhouses willing to have that level of conversation. I don't think that's bad. No, on that level, but but the, the conversation they were having was kind of mediocre, but, but I don't know. Well, it's, maybe by our standards, but- yeah, I think my standards are- You know what I else I thought of? What? I thought of Orson Welles' War of the Worlds and how much that may have impacted people who are in control and how much they think that we might not be able to handle the information. That's what I was saying. Yeah, they, they don't want to lose their control over us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kat, Divine, Marlo, Lombard, and Elizabeth Satoris. I'm Alan Seinfeld.
always it's yeah, a pleasure to can. be here thank you marla and we and we are connecting and we're gonna do this i'm excited about that we'll do and that so we'll have a little it's gonna be so fun yes thank and you. we'll let us know we'll journey into the land of the flower people maybe <laughs> next week if you're watching so thank you all for watching <laughs>